John chapter number 1. just going to read one verse, but this is such a hallmark chapter. We'll read several verses this morning. Let's begin reading verse number one. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I'm glad the living Word came, and He left us the written Word, aren't you? The Bible says in verse two, The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. And that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory... The glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the precious Word of God. Lord, I realize as we contain it and have it, Lord, read it. Lord, we realize most of the world don't have a copy of it. We realize that throughout this world, many have never heard the name of Jesus Christ. They've never heard a clear-cut presentation of the gospel Lord, even in our community, there are folks who have not heard the gospel. And Lord, what a privilege to be able to come to your house this morning, celebrate you as our Heavenly Father, and Lord, worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, Father, I pray for Brother Bob. I pray you touch him. I pray that, Lord, when the service is over, we'll get a good report. So I pray for him. I pray you'd help him. I pray for Jameer's family. God, you would comfort them. You can't imagine the grief they're going through, so God help them. I do pray for Brother Doug's mother and their family. God, you would comfort them and help them. Father, I pray for those that are traveling. You'd give them traveling mercies. Father, I pray for those that are sick, that Lord, touch them and help them. And God be with those that are providentially hindered. Lord, what a privilege to be in the house of God this morning. We thank you for the good choir singing, the good congregational singing. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for two good jail services this morning. And thank you for the privilege of being able to come in the worship hour. Now, Father, bless. Use this unworthy vessel. Enlighten our minds to truth. Edify the saints of God. Certainly convict sinners of their sin that, God, we might see them saved. And God, get glory to Him. We'll bless you and praise you for all that you do. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen. Amen. In this chapter, uh, John is inspired to write some things that reveals us some things about the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I say that we find in this chapter, he reveals that Jesus uh, is the infinite God. Uh, Look again at verse number 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Can I say, John says he's the infinite God. Uh, In the beginning you'll find him. Uh, uh, You say when? In Genesis chapter 1? No, way beyond that. Uh, You go back as far as the Alpha time, uh, you'll find he was there uh, because he was with God uh, and he was God. Uh, There's never been a time that Jesus Christ wasn't. Uh, 
I know folks think he was just born uh, uh, 2,000 years ago in a manger. Uh, no, he stepped out of glory and stepped into the womb of Mary to come. Uh, but my dear friends, there's never been a time that he hasn't been God. Uh, he's the infinite God. Uh, can I say this? John reveals he's the invisible God. Uh, look in verse number 10. Uh, uh, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Can I say, uh, while he walked among men, uh, 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 they did not recognize him as God. He was invisible to them as God. Uh, can I say today, uh, he's holding the earth on its axis. Uh, he is living in his people. Uh, but can I say, uh, uh, he's still invisible to the world. Uh, that's why it's our job to let the world know about Jesus Christ. Uh, can I say he's not only revealed as the infinite God and the invisible God, but he's also uh, revealed as the ignored God. Look at verse number 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Mm -mm. Can I say the Jews still fight over the fact that Jesus was the Christ? They ignored him. He came and fulfilled all the Old Testament prophecies uh, and performed things right before them to pr prove he was God. And they ignored him because they loved their way more than his way. Can I say, there are a lot of people who have been saved by his grace and come to his house and hear his word preach and then leave and ignore him. He's the ignored God. But can I say he's also the invigorating God? Mm, look at verse number 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. We were dead in trespasses and sins, uh, but he came by our way. Uh, when we believed in him, he quickened us, made us alive, uh, gave us power to become the sons of God, uh, invigorated us to the things of God. Uh, whereby we can come to the house of God today and cry, Abba, Father, uh, and worship God in spirit and in truth. Because he, isn't it a blessing to come to the house of God? You can come in low but leave out invigorated. Amen. You can come in hurting and leave out invigorating. You can come in uh, uh, just worn out but leave out invigorating. Why? Because he's the invigorating God. That's why it's important to come when you can come. Huh? Listen, the devil throw everything at you to keep you from coming. I don't know how many times I've had a headache, but I still come to the house of God, and it's amazing. I get in the house of God, I get invigorated. My head quits hurting, and my soul feels good. Mm -mm. Uh, he's invigorating God. But in verse number 14, we find out that he became the incarnate God. Look at what the Bible says. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Look at this verse. We find that the Word was made flesh. We find here that the divine one of glory meets dust. They met together. The Word was made flesh. No, the only time that had ever happened before is when he reached down in the dust of the earth and he created man in his own image and he breathed in man the breath of life and man became a living soul. That day the divine touched the dust. This day the divine becomes the dust so that it can redeem fallen man. We find the divine and de dust met together. We find that he dwelled among us. And we also find that he delivered grace and truth. Hmm? Uh, he was full of grace and truth. I'm interested, though, down in verse number 17. Look at the Bible. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. I'm interested where it talks about nobody's seen God but Jesus. And the only begotten Son is in the bosom of the Father right now. But when He came, look what He said He did. He de hath declared Him. I'm going to preach on this Father's Day on how Jesus declared the Father. Hmm. Can I say that's why the Jews had Him crucified, by the way? Because 
before then, the Jews referred to him as Jehovah. And Jesus came and said, no, he's my father. And he made himself out to be the son of God, which he was. And they thought he was blasphemous because he referred to God as his father, hmm? which he was the father. And he had declared the father to you and I. And can I say, because of Jesus Christ, uh, we've received the adoption of sonship, and we too can call him Father. Hmm? We can call him Abba Father. That's an endearing term. But how has Jesus declared him? What did Jesus do while he was here that declared the Father? That's what I'm interested in. How hath Jesus declared the Father? Can I say, first of all, he declared him by declaring his glory. Look at verse 14 again. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Jesus did declare the Father by showing his glory. Hmm? So how did he declare his glory? How did he show forth the glory of the Father? Uh, can I say, first of all, he did it through the attributes of his character. Uh, uh, he said in John 14, 9, uh, He that hath seen me has seen the Father. Uh, can I say that Jesus uh, had a perfect character? Uh, he had a holy character. Uh, can I say that he went around uh, uh, not only doing good, but if you just hung around him, uh, 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 he never, ever once sinned uh, or did anything to dishonor God. Uh, how will you and I ever declare the glory of the Father uh, through our character? Hmm? Uh, can I say, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. When Christ saves you, uh, he indwells you, uh, and he changes you. Uh, can I say, I'm not what I used to be. Uh, uh, sadly, I'm not always what I should be. Uh, and one day, neighbor, when you see what I will be, uh, but I am redeemed, I'm saved, washed in the blood of Christ, uh, and other people will see that in my character. I don't speak like the world. Can I just say something? This world has gone slap crazy. I remember a time, let me go talk to a sailor. I remember a time when they talked about cussing like a sailor. But they dare, dare didn't do it in front of women. They didn't do it in front of women. Uh, it was a man thing. Right. Well, can I say now, women cuss worse than sailors. Amen. And I don't know what it is about young people today and young adults. They can't speak English, but they can speak cussing. Yeah. Yeah. Miss Annette says every young lady they hire to be over there at the doctor's office, they come in and they're so foul and disgusting in their speech. Uh, she gets on them. Don't cuss around her. Matter of fact, they call her mom. Uh, she's straightened out some of them doctors. She said, we're going to put a swear jar up and you're going to have to pay every time you cuss. Uh, can I say, that's the speech of the world. That's normal to the world uh, to be found. They don't even know they're cussing. Uh, that's just part of who they are. Uh, uh, they'll see a difference in God's people. Uh, our speech isn't like their speech. Our speech uh, is pleasant. Uh, our speech is positive. Uh, our speech is full of praise to our God. Uh, mm -hmm. They can tell difference in your speech. They can tell difference in your character by how you handle things. Listen, nobody likes trouble. But man's days are full of trouble. And you'll face trouble in this world. But how you handle trouble shows who lives in you. Hmm? Huh? By the way, the closer you walk to him, the better you'll be able to handle trouble. Huh? Because you'll find uh, while you're bearing your cross, he's bearing you. Uh, what can I say? Trouble comes their way, they just fall apart. Uh, used to, if you had a, a death in the family, they gave you three days off work. Miss Nets you had a lady over there, she's taking about two months off. Uh, just can't deal with it. Now nobody likes death, it's the king of terrors. But when you got the Prince of Peace living on the inside of you, he gives you grace. 
Uh, he gives you some hope. He gives you some help. They just see you handle trouble. Uh, seems like their cars break down. They fall all apart. Our cars break down. We just call somebody and fix it. There's a difference in how we conduct ourselves. Uh, our character's different. Our speech is different. Uh, hey, uh, uh, just where we go and don't go and how we conduct ourselves is different. Uh, and I say, he, he showed the, the Father and declared the Father through the attributes of his character. But not only that, he revealed the glory of God uh, through his acts, through all of his miracles. How could they deny that he, that he wasn't God? Matter of fact, Isaiah 35 tells us the only one that can open up blinded eyes is God. Well, who opened up Bartimaeus' eyes? Uh, who opened up the other blind men's eyes? Uh, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, because uh, he was God, manifest in the flesh. Uh, hey, uh, what a blessing. Uh, he proved he was God through his acts. Uh, hey, he took loaves and fishes and fed multitudes. Uh, hey, we preached the other night how he dried up the woman's issue of blood, uh, had that disease for 12 years. Uh, can I say raise the dead? Miss uh, uh, Brittany just sang about it. Uh, he did things uh, nobody else has ever done. Uh, and we're still talking about it. Why? Because he was God's son. Uh, he declared the glory of the Father through his acts. He also did it by attesting the scriptures. He preached the word of God like nobody would ever heard. They said, we never heard it on that fashion. Everywhere he go, he proclaimed God's word. He preached it, and he proved it. He lived it. Uh, and you and I, my dear friends, can proclaim what thus saith the Lord. Uh, but if we don't prove it in our lives, uh, if we don't show them how it's changed us, it'll never impact anybody else. Uh, and it'll never show forth the glory of the Father. Can I say this? He proved the glory of God by offering himself as our atonement. Uh, even the thief on the cross looked and said, this man's not like us. And he called out and said, Lord, have mercy on me when thou comest in thy kingdom. What are you saying? I'm saying even in his death he proved he was God's son. Can I say the average man, it took three or four days to kill him on a cross. Uh, uh, they did not kill the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave his life. Uh, he just hung, hung there a few hours uh, when he seen that all things were fulfilled in the scriptures. Uh, and when he seen the Father was pleased with the, uh, the travail of his soul, uh, uh, the Lord Jesus said, It is finished. And he gave up the ghost. Uh, he died purposely. Uh, for our atonement. He became the propitiation for our sins. Uh, he shed his blood to redeem sinners. Jesus came seeking to save that which was lost. He, he declared the glory of God by offering himself as our atonement. He declared the glory of God because he arose from the grave. Uh, we sang that earlier. Uh, he lives. He lives. How do you know he lives? He lives in my heart. Uh, Hey, we're not serving a dead Jew this morning, uh, but a risen Savior uh, that conquered death, hell, and the grave. Uh, and again, he proved the glory of the Father. And I say he declared the glory of the Father through his ascension when he ascended back up into heaven. Uh, it was so wonderful. Not a lot of people witnessed it, brother. But it was so wonderful, there was a couple of angels standing by. So, you men of Galilee, why stand you here gazing up into heaven? Huh? This same Jesus <laughs> that took off, he's coming back in like manner. Huh? That's our blessed hope. We know he's coming. But can I say, he hath declared the Father by declaring his glory. Can I say, he also declared the Father by declaring his grace. Look again in verse 14. He said... Uh, uh, he, we beheld it, His glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Can I say, Jesus brought grace. Can I say, He is Lord, and He's the righteous judge. He could have brought judgment, but He didn't. He brought grace. Can I say, under the Old Testament economy, if you was a Jew, you had to live by the law in order for righteousness to be imputed to, to us. The law was given as our schoolmaster to show us we couldn't be saved in our own account. You can't live good enough. You can't do the law. You can't fulfill it. We can't even keep the Ten Commandments alone, all 600 plus of them. Matter of fact, 
bust your bubble, everybody in here is breaking the law right now. Say, how can you say that, preacher? Well, first of all, can I say that under the law you couldn't wear mixed blended fabrics. Every one of us got a blended fabric on. Nobody's got all wool on or all cotton on or something. We got a blend. Every one of us are breaking the law right now. Guilty. You ought to die and go to hell. Can't keep the law. That's just one. Can I say under the law you had to have a fortress built around your house? Have you got that? I got a fence in the backyard. It won't even barely keep my dog in. You have a fortress? Guilty. You got to die and go to hell. Huh? And we can go on and on and on and on about the law. See, all the law did was show us we could not be holy. But Jesus Christ came to fulfill the law because he was holy. And he made a way. Unholy, us sinners, could be saved by the grace of God. Not of works that we've done. Because if it's by what we've done, then we would boast. We'd go to heaven and say, Jesus, get off the throne. I'm here under my own. But we couldn't do it. And the law says you can't do it. And the law points its finger. Isn't it sad? There's 300 different religions and denominations in uh, uh, the world right now. And can, say, can I say that 90% of them, maybe 95% of them, say you've got to do this to be saved. They're trying to get you to keep the law. And you can't do it. Hmm. But aren't you glad Jesus said, I'll keep the law. And then any that come by me, I know why I cast him out. He said, you don't have to keep the law. You just believe on me, and I'll show you grace. Uh, I'll give you what you don't deserve. You deserve hell, but I'll give you eternal life, and I'll give you heaven. The Bible says in Romans 3.24, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Uh, how, how are you saved, preacher? How are you going to heaven? Why are you different? I'm different because Christ Jesus saved me. I believed on Him. He made the difference. Uh, uh, Romans 5, 2 says, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand uh, and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Uh, Romans 5, 20 says, Moreover, the law entered uh, that the offense might abound, uh, but where sin abounded, uh, grace did much more abound. Uh, that as sin reigned unto death, uh, even so might grace reign through righteousness uh, unto eternal life by Jesus Christ. Christ our Lord. Uh, 2 Corinthians 8 9. Uh, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that though he was rich, uh, yet for your sakes he became poor, uh, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Uh, Ephesians 1 7 says, uh, In whom we have redemption uh, through his blood, uh, the forgiveness of sins uh, according to the riches of his grace. Uh, uh, the law says guilty, uh, grace says forgiven. Uh, I'm glad. Uh, all my sins have been washed in the blood of Christ. Uh, they've been forgiven, uh, never to be remembered against me anymore. Uh, I'm saved by the good grace of God uh, and His grace, declared the Father. Uh, you see, a lot want to look at fa the Father as a tyrant. That all God is about rules and judgment. But see, God, through Christ, showed grace. And my dear friends, I'm glad I don't get what I deserve. Can I say God would be just and throw me off into hell and things I've thought and, and done this week. But I'm not going to hell. Why? Because of the grace of God. Because Jesus saved me from my sins. He's declared the Father through glory. He's declared the Father through grace. Then lastly, He's declared the Father through the gospel. Look what it said again in verse number 14, full of grace and truth. How many have ever heard the term, the gospel truth? Can I say the absolute truth that we need to uh, wrap our minds around, believe and embrace is the gospel truth. Uh, can I say this truth? Uh, 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 it, it'll change your life. And he revealed the gospel truth uh, uh, through redemption. 
In Romans 1.16, uh, Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, uh, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, uh, to the Jew first and also the Greek. Uh, can I say today, uh, uh, the gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, it is the truth that you don't have to die and go to hell, uh, that Jesus died for your sins uh, according to the Scriptures. Uh, he was buried and rose again according to the Scriptures. Uh, and if you'll put your faith in the works of Jesus Christ uh, and believe the gospel, uh, you'll be saved from your sin. Uh, you don't have to die and go to hell. The good news is uh, you don't have to perish. Uh, you don't have to die. Uh, you don't have to go to hell. Uh, you can have life. Uh, have it more abundantly because uh, the giver of life died for you uh, and he'll give you life through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. Can I say, he gave us the truth concerning redemption. Thank God for the gospel. Right. We're to preach the gospel. Let folks know Jesus loved them. He died for them, and he'll save them. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank God for the good news of the gospel. Not only the, the truth concerning redemption, also the truth concerning regulation. While Jesus was here, he taught us how we should live. Two of his great sermons are called the, the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes. And he gives us some instruction on how we're supposed to live. Now, we don't always like what Jesus says, but he gives us the truth. And by the way, can I say this? Sometimes the truth hurts. Mm. But listen to what he said about regulation, how we should conduct ourselves. In uh, Luke 6, in the Beatitudes, he says things like this. Verse 27, he says, But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. That's not easy. When people hate us, we want to hate them back. When people are unkind to us, we wish unkind things happen on them. But Jesus says, no, you need to love your enemies. And you need to do good to them that hate you. He said, bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. That is bad. Does Jesus really mean that? I'm to bless them that curse me and I'm to pray for them that despitefully use me. Those that do me wrong and know they're doing me wrong, I'm supposed to pray for them. Hmm? Boy, that rolls off tongue easy, but that's hard living. I don't know, I just got a little redneck in me and that's hard. Huh? You know, you, you do me wrong, I, I'm, I'm going to do you wrong. But Jesus said, no, you got to bless them and pray for them. I, I told this story before, I'm going to tell because it it's on my heart right now. There was a fella that used to really lie about me. He used to tell other preachers that I was a compromiser, that I didn't believe the Bible, that I used a false Bible, that I didn't believe in the local church, and all kinds of stuff he made. I don't believe in the Bible so much that I got it in the carpet. I mean, I mean, uh, it's on the wall, huh? That's the only Bible I got. I got a bunch of copies of it, but I, that's the only one I use because it's the Word of God. Amen. They used to lie. They used to say our church uh, was a, a, a bastard church and all kinds of things. Well, I had a preacher call me one day. And said, this guy's talking about you. You're a dog. He said, but I got one of your preaching tapes. I listened to you. And he said, you know what? You preach it straight. And he called and apologized to me. Well, as soon as I got a phone off, off the phone with him, I got to think about that guy talking bad about me. And can I say, the redneck in me started flaring up. I wanted to pick up the phone and call him. Matter of fact, the same guy went to a, a church, I won't call it, some of you know it, and called me by name and said that I stole money out of a church and and. Brother Thad and Miss Tammy had friends in that church, and I called Brother Thad and said, Your preacher's a thief. Well, Miss Tammy, she got 38, locked and loaded, and said, Where's the sucker live? <laughs> well, I was spiritual, and I, that's what you want to do, but I was spiritual minded that time. At least I told him, I said, Let God be true, and every man a liar. Right. But again, it rolls off the tongue, but that's not easy living. Well, one day I'm in my office, we're in the old building, and I read Luke 6, and I see that where you're supposed to pray for them that despitefully you. I got up from my desk, I walked away. 
And I went back, it's still on Luke 6, and I read it again. The Holy Ghost is just pointing it out. I said, all right. So, first few times, I just said the words. God bless that guy and bless his church and bless his ministry. But really, I didn't mean it. But I said it. And the Holy Ghost said, say it and mean it. Started praying. And I started praying for him. And I really meant it. God bless him. And then, just so happened, ended up in North Carolina in a, in a big meeting. And he was there. He said, what would you do? I went up shook his hand and said, it's good to see him. Because I've been praying for him. He didn't much want to see me, but I went and said, yeah. well, what he didn't know is all that crowd was my buddies. So he got up and preached. They just looked at him. But when I got up and preached, they, well, heaven fell, you know. But anyway, I just kept praying for him. Wasn't long. I found out. He started sending people to our church. Well, the first guy showed up, I'm thinking, oh, boy, what's this guy showing up for if he's sending no, the blessing. He started sending folks to our church. Next thing I know, he starts starts bragging on our church. Next thing I know, he, he actually called and invited me to come and preach for him. Yeah. You say, what did you do? I told Miss Annette, I said, either God's answered my prayer or that guy got saved. That's all I know. You say, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say the Word of God works. Yeah. It's not easy all the time. But God's able to change things and do things that you and I can't even understand. He doesn't ask us to change the things. He just tells us to do what He said. That's not easy. I'm talking about He gave us the gospel in regulation. He's telling us what to do. Here's another one. Verse 29, And unto them that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid him not to take thy coat also. He says somebody jacks you in the jaw. Turn the other and say, go ahead and hit this one. Whew. It's not easy. He said, if somebody wants your cloak, give him your coat too. Whew, it's not easy. This guy stole my cloak, and I'm supposed to give him my coat too. That's what the Bible says. You say, why? Because Jesus is trying to teach us something about character. He's trying to teach us to be like him. Huh? Can I say a cloak and a coat's just things, but a soul's eternal. And you can impact souls when you act like Christ. Huh? He goes on to give us some more things in here. This is so good. Let's just read some more things we got to do. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. Uh -uh. Somebody steals from you, just say, that's okay, just have it. Hmm? And if you do good to them which do to you, what have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if you lend to them whom you hope to receive, what think ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, uh, and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. Uh, and your reward shall be great, uh, and, ye shall see, and ye shall be the children of Elias, uh, for he is kind uh, unto the unthankful and to the evil. Uh, be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, uh, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, uh, and running over shall men give into your bosom. Uh, for with the same measure that you meet with all, uh, it shall be measured to you again. Hmm? Again, regulation. How to live. It's not always easy, but it's always right. Huh? You know what he's saying? Huh? He's saying you reap what you sow. Sinners are good to other sinners, but if you're good to a sinner and don't expect anything in return, they can't get over that. And that might just be what it takes for Christ to redeem their soul. He's saying, to live as Christ is gain. Just, just be Christian. We call ourselves Christian. He tells us how to be a Christian. He gives us the gospel through redemption and through regulation, and then lastly gives us the gospel through revelation. Jesus revealed truth while he was here. Gave us truth about the end times. In Matthew 24, he said, verse 34, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass, all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not, word shall not pass away. But of that day, what day? The, the day of the Lord, the second coming. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, 
so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Boy, we're, we're just about living in the days of Noah, aren't we? Where man's thoughts are evil continually. He said, that's what it's going to be like. Uh, he said, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall be the coming of the Son of Man be. He gave us revelation about the end times. He gave us regulation. He gave us Redemption. He gave us the gospel. He gave us truth. And that declared the Father. Can I say it's impossible for God to lie? God is always about truth. That's why we're to have the truth in our inner parts. David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Can I say the truth will keep you from sin, but sin will keep you from the truth. And Jesus declared the Father through the truth. Now let me say this. Jesus declared the Father that we might know the Father. Do you know Him today? Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you've been saved by the good grace of God? John revealed in 1 John 5, verse 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one that bear witness in the earth the spirit the water and the blood and these three agree in one in verse 11 he says and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life and this life is in his son he that hath the son hath life he that hath not the son of God hath not life these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the son of God there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus. Let me ask you, do you know the Father? Have you believed on the Son? Do you know that you know that you know that you have eternal life? John said these things are written that we may know. I don't hope to be saved. I know that I am saved. Say, so how do you know? I was there 49 years ago when it happened. Changed my life. I've never gotten over it. I'm still talking about 49 years later. Why? Because Jesus is the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And if you've been saved by the good, good grace of God, it's the greatest thing that ever happened to you. Can you go back to a place where you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and He changed your life? If not, today could be your day. Today's the day of salvation. Don't reject Him. You can know the Father. What better day to become acquainted with the Father of glory than Father's Day? You can know Him today. He can be your Heavenly Father. But you've got to be willing to give Him your heart and your life. You've got to be willing to turn from your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said, Whosoever shall believe on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved today. We're going to give, that, give you that opportunity. We're going to have an invitation. We're going to invite you to become a member of the family of God. We're not going to invite you to become a Baptist, a member of this church. We're going to invite you to come and trust in Christ. There's nothing greater than to receive that invitation. If you don't know Him, once you come, you say, Preacher, I don't know how to be saved. We'll take the Bible, show you how to be saved. You can put your faith in what God said, and you can know the Heavenly Father as your Father. If you're here today and you're saved, but there's just something not right, we're going to give you an invitation to come and get it made right. You're here today and you're saved, and you just want to come and tell the Father, thank you for saving you. We're going to give you that opportunity. If you want to come, just tell Him you love you, love Him. We're going to give you that opportunity. There's nothing like knowing the Father and walking in His will. Let me ask you that question again. Do you know the Father? Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? If not, you can know him today. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. While he gets a song, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do love you. Thank you for being our heavenly Father. Thank you for the privilege of calling on you in prayer, knowing that you hear and answer prayer. Now, Father, in a crowd this size, there may be somebody here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. God, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. I pray they'd come and put their faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, today may be a day when somebody just needs to come and get something made right with you. Today may be the day when somebody just wants to come and thank you or tell you they love you. Whatever the need is, Lord, I pray folks would respond accordingly. I certainly do pray you'd help your people. Lord, we do live in wicked times, and Lord, it is sometimes hard, Lord, to live as Christ in this world. But God, help us to be what you'd have us to be because you declared the Father when you was here and help our lives declare the Father to a lost and dying world. God bless this invitation now. 
And we'll thank you for it. Speak to hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.